You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. right now we'll just take it again okay so are we gonna let everybody know that we're that we're recording this six days early i don't know i think we should i mean do oh, we, do, okay. you know just like anything else i get blamed for you know hey scott did you release the show yet or are you gonna let it sit in the uh, storage unit for a year you know oh, no no we won't put the storage unit, but no anyhow yeah things no. do season like fine wine in our case but you know the, the thing is i have not packed yet for jeep beach and we're leaving the day after tomorrow we just got done fixing jeeps and i guess yeah. we ought to talk about that huh yeah, probably a good idea to talk about. Yeah, perspective, good show topic. And, ah, okay. You know, uh, uh-oh. What? I've been recording this whole time. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, well. <laughs> Hi. Hi, folks. Welcome to another episode of On the Trail with Kevin and Scott. Show 138 or 139. I can't I have to do math right now. <laughs> uh, I'm Kevin, the engineer, uh, the guy that, uh, you know, reads instructions, uses the right tools, and generally follows those instructions. And I am Scott. I'm the slapstick still a parts guy at heart still you will always be a parts guy there is no retirement from that yeah no but uh currently on hiatus and uh, while i won't use actually i do use torque wrench to torque torque wrenches yeah i mean i I was a follow i (laughs) I can't say it but he uses them uh, yeah exactly and and stuff like that but again while we will share what works for us as well as what didn't oh boy we got a good one we do (laughs) with Um, with some interesting (laughs) twists that are humorous Exactly, At least Scott. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes you know some tools will spit in the defiance of the uh, face and hold on for dear life. <clears throat> anyway, so uh, while we were sure and what didn't, remember it's always up to you to do your research, what you want to your Jeep, and have fun with it. But always read the instructions and please follow them. Please. Well, uh, you'll be listening to this on May one. Yeah, May one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can't talk, guys. We've been out. Uh, 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 We've been out beating our heads mentally, physically. Uh, Scott will tell you I've been bleeding on various vehicles. <laughs> he's, yes. like, he's looking yes. at me, going, "You don't have a condition, do you?" I said, "Why?" <laughs> he says, "You've got blood pouring out of your hand." I said, "Oh no, it's just leaking slowly." <laughs> it's like you have to sacrifice something to the almighty Jeep guys to keep the check engine light on. You know what? Oh my goodness, it wasn't till you bled the check engine light went off. Huh? But more on that later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a little behind the scenes, oh, for real. You know that, but for real, we're um, we are scrambling at this recording mm-hmm. to literally get ourselves, our jeeps, and our luggage uh, ready to go to Jeep Beach. Yeah, you know, here I'm thinking, you know, hey, I'm gonna take some time off, and I'll have plenty of time to do the things I need to do. <laughs> yeah, how well did that yeah, work? Yeah, no. So, <laughs> anywho, so yeah, to, as, it, as our friend Bob said in the video. That ain't going to happen. No. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, Scott, you're going to come to the Jeep Beach early? Like, no, literally two days before, I'm getting furniture delivered <laughs> <laughs> to my house that's 30 minutes away from the event. <laughs> yes. I guess that is news that they know is Scott has purchased a new house mm-hmm. and will be moving from the Tampa region to outside of the Orlando region yep. of Florida. And I am leaving, as weird as it sounds, I just closed on our new house being built. Uh, we finally got our certificate of occupancy. Got a few things left to do, but we will be moving from south of Tampa to more inland to mm-hmm. a little area south of Plant City. And I'll just leave it as that. And uh, we do hear banjos playing at night where we, are, we built our house. <laughs> but uh, so yeah. the cows are playing banjos. Yeah. <laughs> moo, 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 moo. I'm sorry. That joke was <laughs> utterly repulsive. And he's. On a roll. If I keep this, how much up, caffeine get, did you have in that cup? If I keep this up, I'll get grounded beef. No, the um, I had a Red Bull. I had a can of Rocket Fuel because I was falling asleep, but you know, not anymore. <laughs> no, not anymore. So, uh, anywho, folks, any um, hoozles. Hopefully, uh, uh, Jeep Beach goes well. <laughs> yeah. Here, let me get uh, my, cra- uh, my my Magic Eight Ball. Shake, shake, shake. It's unclear. It's unclear. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully everybody we got to see out there got to pick up on the little uh, gift that we had. Mm-hmm. Uh, and speaking of the gift, I do want to take a moment uh, now that you'll be listening to this after the show to explain the logo. 
yes. and why it's special and why if you were there and got one of these or if you're in a situation where Scott sent you one for whatever reason, you'll understand why it is and it's also not coming back. Yeah. Uh, the the Obviously, you may see the beach towel next year at G Beach. That's kind of neat having the towel over top of the trail because really there's no trail to follow. There's an obstacle course, but it's going to be – um, you know, playing on the beach, running yeah. up and down the beach, trying to tell people, please stay out of the salt water. You can hear your Jeep rusting. Uh, Quiet night. <laughs> uh, but it does have two markers that are significant to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is significant to, well, both are significant to, yeah. to us, but uh, one is the flag logo of a blue tang. And mm-hmm. all you have to do is think of a certain movie that there was a specific blue tang who had a name that matched up to Scott's late wife. Yes. Um, the other one is a squirrel on the bumper and uh, AD, ADH is it? No. ADH squirrel, yeah. ADH squirrel, yeah. The ADH squirrel. And that was the moniker that was used by our friend Brian. Mm-hmm. Uh, and unfortunately, Brian left us also within five days of Dory leaving us. Yeah. Uh, Brian was thing one, I was thing two. We both had red LJs. So, anyhow, um, the. Thing is, both of them really loved Jeep Beach. Yeah, this is this is one of the first events Dory and I had, and, and she found the information. She wanted to go to Jeep Beach, and she loved this event last year. You know, it, it was an escape for us, you yeah. know, and, and we, we bought her winch, you know, and we were going to buy stuff for her Jeep, and we did, and she was so excited. And, and then Brian was the guy, if you guys were ever there, and you were driving up and down the beach, and you saw a nutcase running around with American flag <laughs> swim trunks swim on, trunks. Yeah. you know. <laughs> That was him. That was Brian. Yeah. And both have left us now this uh, this yeah. last year. And we wanted to honor them. Mm-hmm. They're, they're coming with us in a way. They're mm-hmm. coming with us. In, with, 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 but with us. after this Jeep Beach is over, the our logo, well, I'm not going to say it's going to go exactly back to normal, but it will return more to its normal state mm-hmm. if there is such a thing. Yeah. Uh, but that way you know what you have. Uh, mm-hmm. And again, if it fits in your bill, that's great. If it doesn't, hey, that's okay too. It just meant something to us. Yeah, and then because we want you know, one person, kind of already questioned, you know, or not questioned, but just asked when we had them printed, like, why the new logo? I'm like, well, you know, yeah. And then what, what they put two and two together very quickly, and we're like, oh yeah, absolutely, we can do this. So yeah, a big thank you to Tanya for getting these things. To, uh, uh, well, the shirts we have for us personally, but um, the people at the uh, the promotional place the, so. that did. The dig the backpack bags. Yeah, and um, I do want to do want to tell uh, say thank you to those who donated stuff for the bags. Yes, very yes. much. So. For those of you who got them, you can look inside, and there's all kinds of little swaggy things that you mm-hmm. could you can pick them up too. But we decided to preload them from you for yeah. those uh, uh, companies and and shops and things like that that help the show, who provide us information, who you know give us feedback and and. Uh, just general content. And so we thought, well, it'd be nice to throw them in as well. Yeah. So yes. having said that, I hope if you were at Jeep Beach, you enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's weird doing this ahead of time, but it has <laughs> it to is. be done. Otherwise, we would be late. <laughs> yeah. So because uh, there's no way we're going to be having the time to record. <laughs> well, <laughs> we, we, we didn't know. You know, we didn't know if we'd have time and we're going to be using a lot of people. And, and it's 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 going to be fun. It's going to be a, a great event. It always is every year. It um, is. Gun of the Trail Dog is going to be at a, a, a pet setting place that has lots of acres and lots of mud holes he can run through. Man, did he get filthy last time. Yep. But, so uh, anywho, um, as far as the references leading into the show, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, first off, let's do this like a compliment sandwich. Guess what, everybody? Some things have happened in Scott's life on the positive note. Yes. Starting with the fact that I got the tires and wheels mounted on the Gladiator. He did. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, all that got handled. So, that that was taken care of. Plus, I also got the, uh, the pre-runner lights installed. On the Gladiator. I, I wanted those, too. Sorry, I'm a sucker for, for that. And, of course, you know, the good thing is I didn't have to let those wait to yep. for a year in the storage unit. William Matson, I promise we'll get that lift installed before Jeep Beach next year. So the um, <laughs> that's the only promise I can make. But more importantly, thanks to Kevin's patience, <laughs> calm, reserved, <laughs> I got parts installed in the LJ today. But that was... Unfortunately, 
three days later than they were supposed to be. Well, which which is the other part of the story we'll lead to shortly. Yeah, but we'll lead to shortly. But uh, the, the important thing is though is that we got uh, the bed rug installed in the LJ. Yes, you did. Still waiting on the seat brackets, but that's okay. But uh, again, so I have new a new bed rug inside the LJ, which is going to be nice, and we got some things secured, and it looks so much nicer in there. You got it your just, storage box fixed, so it doesn't yes, rattle, rattle anymore. You got your uh, subwoofer rewired so that it actually yeah. operates. Yeah, you know. Uh, a weird one, we rebuilt, and this is not an exaggeration, folks, we rebuilt his OBD2 connector. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what happened to that batch of plastic because yeah. I have an 05 as well, and mine's still quite functional. But <laughs> well, well, let, let, Scott let's, started let's... falling into pieces, okay. literally. We need to back this up a bit, okay? Beep, Four, beep, yeah, in 2016, beep. when I bought this Jeep... <laughs> Y'all see what's going? I know. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Far Appreciate enough. it. Yeah, that's far <laughs> enough. Yeah. Come on back. No, no the the uh, so again, uh, true to form, my uh, my OBT two connector thing broke on the edge. You know, it came well, off. first it broke and it came off it of the dash off. and yeah, was yeah. hanging there. It hanging there. And again, while we did the uh, AC system back in 2017, Kevin was like, "We need to take care of this." I'm like, "Yeah, we'll get to it." And he goes, "Uh huh." Uh -huh. This is before the uh, the lift incident, but uh, so. True to form, I ignored it, zip tight, threw it up there. He did. <laughs> Got the super chip, plugged that sucker in there, and it broke some more. Don't care, have zip ties, we'll travel. And everything's working great. So then we decided, we, you know, I had a check engine light. I can't remember exactly what it means, but um, we, we did something where I unplugged it and... Uh, more of the thing fell off, including more, a wire. A wire fell out right before we went to the Red Star yeah. event. So I had no super, uh, my, my trail dash thing anymore. I'm like, oh man, that bums me out. You know, never mind, it's been like, like fracturing the past year. But, uh, or so, two. Or, or four. Yeah. So zip ties won't fix everything, guys. But uh, so again, you know, today we went into the salvage yard. We cut another one off. We we handled it. We got it installed. And now, but 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 I want to take it back. Is yeah, the other day we went to Red Star. Yeah, is that I was trying to muffin smash it together. You know, <laughs> Kevin, like, you have it upside down. Like uh, then immediately I go, I hope not, because I just like meat pod <laughs> these things together. <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting one to, to put an OBD two together. And didn't want to cut wires, so we got a couple of head shells out of the yard that were the same style. And they weren't exact matches, but they were close enough that with a little bit of persuading, um, his connectors went into those, got the pen out out of the, the factory service manual to make sure the wire's in the right place, and mm -hmm. then remounted it. And lo and behold, the OBD2 scanner worked perfectly, and his trail dash lit up and said, oh, yeah, we're here again. We can communicate. We can yeah. talk. And most importantly... That yellow wire didn't droop down and touch the brake pedal, giving him a check engine light like it kept doing. Well, I think it was the airbag light. Oh, it was the airbag light. That's yeah. right. You're driving along with him. And he goes, uh oh. I said, what's the matter? He said, oh, just, just the light. I said, which one? Airbag. Oh, good. Let me put the seat all the way back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it was funny because it was hanging down as I'm trying to step with the clutch. I'm mashing on the, the, the connector. And every time I do it, beep, it goes off. I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to hurt. So, <laughs> But no, it was kind of fun, though. But see, the reason why we took the red LJ, this is where. I let Kevin take over. Oh, this was uh, the end of last week, which, if you're listening to the show, is a week and a half ago. Um, but um, we were getting ready to work and do all this stuff last week. Yeah. And uh, we were going to run out somewhere. Oh, to, it was Red Star. To Red Star, yeah. which is uh, a uh, bar and grill here that sponsors a Jeep and um, other vehicle night every Thursday night. It's kind of partnered with one of the shops that we talk about. Uh, and uh, it's a it's a pretty neat event. Um, DJ just turned on the volume a little bit so we could actually talk out there. But yeah. anywho, um, fired up, uh, uh, slightly altered, and uh, she rolled about six feet out the garage and... <laughs> she was dead. Mm -hmm. And dead as in... Couldn't even back her up back into the garage. Yeah, and we started a marathon. I'm like, I'm leaving for Jeep Beach in less than a week, and the Jeep died. Mm -hmm. Initiate panic stage one. <laughs> the beginning of many expletives <laughs> deleted. Yes, because we start throwing things to check: air, fuel, fire. I have um, check the fuel in the manner that. Uh, Noid lights were firing, the, the, but 
there's, there, there's more to come on that. But, you know, at this point, all right, what else can I check? It well, does not appear that I have ignition coil. Go well, ahead. It, one thing, we, when we first um, started it, I did hear a telltale you of like, you know, the fuel pump priming. So at this moment, okay, the fuel pump's still coming on. Yeah, we had an audible, audible thing, but it just no go. Um, and admittedly, that's when the pressure got to me. And instead of following my own rules and regulations, <clears throat> I shot the parts cannon. Well, what we did is we did find out something kind of cool, like the, um, the yeah. pins you used well, to test. Well, well, yeah, I was yeah. going to say, you, you, you're so excited on that one. Well, it's uh, not just that, it's just you started firing the parts can, but we did do a little testing. For we, well, we did. We did. And, and what was coming up was the. Uh, it's very hard to check the coil packs on the later four liters to see if they're operating. Um, you can check the input, but that's but there's 12 volts that goes to the coil pack, and then there's three wires that go to ground at the computer, and that's all there is. And when they ground, they fire. But unfortunately, the coil pack sits in an insulated box with an insulated rubber sleeve on top of the spark plug jammed in down in the engine. So there's nothing to see, no indication, nowhere I can put a, uh, a uh, an, an induction probe that easily. And I got a wild idea, and I ran over to my regular household repair stuff in the electrical bag and got a um, voltage tester that you use for non-contact testing of electrical systems and houses. You know, the little thing that's plastic tip with a red light that when you stick it on or a near socket that's got power or a light switch, it goes, Brrr, you know, with a little red light. And I said, Scott, fire up your Jeep. And he did, and I went over the coil <coughs> packs, and not on top, but on the sides of each coil, if you held the light there, guess what? It flashes. It flashes. Brrr at the rate your, your coil is flashing because that pretty much is inductive AC. Yeah. And it wasn't working on mine, okay? I wasn't getting any of that reading on mine. Uh, so I'm going, okay, so what do we do? Well, we actually swapped coil packs from his Jeep to mine. That was nice of him to offer. Mm -hmm. Mine was dead still. So put his coil pack on his Jeep, mine on mine. Well, what triggers it? Well, the ignition system is pretty simple. You have a crank position sensor and you have a cam position sensor. You know, and they go to the ECM. And so I went ahead on, went out on a limb, and I bought both of them and put new ones in. Still no fire. She cranked like crazy, but no fire. Picked up the phone because there was some weird things going on on my OBD2 scanner. It wasn't giving me any check engine lights, but I had two engine RPMs, two uh, crank ignition values showing up which I found out later is normal, depending on what it is, that one of them is a primary from the ECM being broadcast on the network, and the other one is the bounce back off the uh, body control computer system reporting it too. Right. Um, but regardless, <clears throat> so I pick up the phone and I call our friend at uh, uh, wranglerfix.com. Mm -hmm. Or actually Scott called him for me and yeah, was Mark. holding the phone while I was sitting there. And, and Mark's like, well, you know, I don't know. He says, I, that does sound weird, but, you know, I, I'd, I'll just send you a, a computer. And I said, no, Mark, I don't really don't know that I need a computer. He said, I'll send it for you. Try it. If it works, great. If not, send it back. Right. You know, that's pretty much the story. Uh, and there's more to come with that comes later. Mm -hmm. But um, so <clears throat> anywho, um, you know, I'm about to go nuclear. Um, and I go one more time and turn the key on. And I realize all I'm hearing is the blower motor. So I reach over and I turn the AC, you know, the HVAC system off. And I turn the key on again. And you should have a three-second prime of the fuel pump. And I'm not hearing a thing. Yeah. And I realized then, okay, it's a pain in the arse because the late model fuel rails on the four O's don't have a Schrader valve to check. <clears throat> so you got to disconnect fuel lines and make a mess. And I disconnect the fuel lines and no mess. Yeah. Clue one. See where we're going, folks? Mm -hmm. Put the gauge in. Gage shouldn't care. <laughs> yeah. Did the riskiest thing I've probably done. Left the line completely wide open and turned on the key to see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dead dry. Turned out, shooting the parts cannon based on some less than reasonable analytics, because I was trying to beat the clock, mm -hmm. um, glossed over the initial point. Just because the fuel injectors are firing doesn't mean there's fuel behind them. Yeah. And in my case, the fuel pump had died after 143,000 miles and whatever 2005 to 22 is. Right. Um, <clears throat> so we uh, um, 
called around frantically because I was trying to get to this Jeep event at the uh, the Red Star Bar and Grill here in yeah. Brandon, Florida. And uh, we made it. I rode with Scott. Um, <laughs> fortunately, <clears throat> as obviously things go, the store that said, yeah, we've got it in stock, didn't have it in stock and would have to order it. But the store that said, no, we don't got it in stock, you'll have to order it and pick it up in two days, had one in stock. Mm -hmm. And I was able to pick up a brand new Delphi fuel pump, which is the factory manufactured fuel pump, and uh, bring it home with me. So that the next day on Friday, we had a little marathon. A couple of Scott and, and Bob came over and helped me push the Jeep back into the garage yep. <laughs> for the night. And get up in the morning and try and get the Jeep back out of its parking place over to a spot that was safe to work on and drop the gas tank. And, of course, I had just filled it. Okay. So it was chock full. Uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. It was a little little bouncy, a little awkward. But fortunately, all the bolts came out. Um, we only ran into one what I would call notable problem. There were the usual ones with the quick disconnect fuel lines and vent lines. They didn't want to come apart, but they did. Yeah. And that was the lock ring and the lock ring gasket, the O-ring. Uh, the O-ring that came with the pump, I would have normally put the new one in, except it was way too stiff. It yeah. would not compress. And I'm trying to close the lock ring, and I realize I'm cutting the steel lock ring as I'm trying to seat it. It's just going, uh-uh, ain't going to happen there. Yeah. So we took it off, cleaned up. The old one was not broken, damaged, nicked, or anything. I just... Put it back on. Use some super lube. Lube some super lube just to make sure it slid right. And boom, a couple of bops. And she locked in, sloshed the tank. Nothing leaked. And she pushed back in, turned the key, and sh there she goes. She mm -hmm. Fired up, running rail. So uh, that was an entire day that was supposed to be spent working on Scott, getting <laughs> getting the bedroom installed. Yeah, well, getting anything done on Scott's yeah. LJ. And yeah, it didn't go that way. Uh, oh. So that was replaced today <laughs> by a full day today. <laughs> Of doing work on Scott's Jeep. So uh, we all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, it cost me probably an additional $80 for two sensors that I didn't need. Right. Ultimately have taken those back out um, and uh, don't need Mark's computer, but there's a story to tell on that. But that story is not done being written yet, so I will just leave that teaser where we left it hang. Mm -hmm. There's more to come. But uh, I will tease a little bit and say that Wrangler Fix has something in the works for those of us. With yes. The, uh, well, actually, for just about everything. Mark was also quick to tell me that he's expanded his line radically all the way up to the Gladiators and JLs. Mm -hmm. So whether you've got a JK, a JL, a, you know, a Gladiator, what is that? A JT. JT. JTs. Um, or any oddballs, give him a call. Yeah. Uh, he cut his teeth. A, and not a sponsor for us by no. any stretch, but a good friend of the show. Um, uh, and, uh, he is trying to kind of be that l slightly different supplier of parts that he'll listen to you. He'll help you. And he's trying not to just take parts like on the four liters where there was a flaw in that computer, mm -hmm. uh, particular models that was with certain options would trigger that flaw and you'd get four dead O2 sensor reported and they weren't, you know, and those kind of things. And he's figuring out what the flaws are and how to work around them so they don't come back. He's reverse engineering. He's solution. reverse engineering. So uh, there's more on what he's working on. Uh, and, and even though you're listening to this after Jeep Beach, we're meeting him at Jeep Beach, and we're going to talk about some of the stuff. And I want to make sure that before I share it with you, you I get everything in a row. I get everything in a row and make sure he's okay with what I'm saying. So yeah. uh, more to come on that. Yeah, and that's one other thing we did today, too, is I also got my idle air control motor uh, installed in the uh, Jeep. That thing was a wee bit <sighs> grungy. Yeah, there was so much carbon on here, man. I, I was honestly, the more we cleaned, I, th I thought I'd find Han Solo because there was so much carbon in there. Well, yeah, it wasn't carbonite, but it's carbon. <laughs> Don't remember my joke with facts. Come on. <laughs> But now I, I uh, we, we cleaned my throttle body and did all that. And again, that, that has been literally rolling around the Jeep since uh, November. So not not as bad as the rest of the parts I've, I've had since November. Well, let's put it this way, folks. It was so coked up around it with, like you said, carbon uh, residues on the idle air motor that it almost didn't want to come out. I yeah. had to kind of work at it because you can't really pry on it because it's soft aluminum and so is the throttle body. And so you kind of have to, okay, tap, 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 turn, twist, turn, twist, turn, twist, and just kind of worry through the carbon till finally the thing 
popped out. Yeah. <laughs> Patooey. Yeah. And then I looked inside and I said, yeah, you definitely got some problems here, bucko. Um, well, and- that, again, I, I was glad to get it finally done because I'm chipping through this list. Mm. You know, the, the big one's still yet to be done, the lift. And again, once I get the lift and the seats in, I'm going to be okay for a little bit. Yeah. Well, you still re- you still have four pieces of steel coming from uh, Mastercraft that uh, adapt the yes. seats to the base. And, you know, folks, it's going to be one of those. There's going to be eight bolts per side is all it takes to remove and reinstall. So, so those those rails come, eh, it'll go in pretty quick. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I wish I could report to you about Jeep Beach, but nope, we ain't there yet. Yeah, we ain't there yet. We're going to have fun. You'll hear about this, but, you know, we'll, we may come out with a short snippet of a follow-up to this show, you know, if, if time permits. But uh, since we're going to be out there, we're scheduled with quite a few of different vendors and different places at different times on the beach for different things. Uh, So uh, we'll see. We'll see. But uh, let's see. So you've got work left to do on the LJ. You've got Mm -hmm. a little bit left to do, I thought, on the the Gladiator. Um, Well, the Gladiator, um, well, now I'm going to be doing a lift in the Gladiator eventually, but it's got to sit in the storage unit for a year because we've got to keep that thing going. Oh, okay. Um, But, uh, again, right now I'm just going to kind of stabilize and just I want to get out and wheel. Yeah, well, you you get it. you got to move. Yes. Get settled. <laughs> gotta I've got to move and get settled. And then I've got to build my new shop and barn so that I have a place to do the Jeep things. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Thanks to everybody that has made comments on the videos. Oh, yes. Um, you know, Bob is excited and he's been to a couple. That's what, what was going on at the uh, um, Red Star uh, this past week. Uh, Thursday was that we had... Shane and the uh, the YJ with the da- glass dash there. Bob brought his LS powered YJ and a few others, and they were definitely the center of attention. Um, a lot of people were commenting on Bob's you know build as oh my god that thing looks factory. Yeah, so, uh, I'm trying to see how many uh, the downloads we have or views on the other video. Um, if you haven't checked it out, please do. You know. Yeah, it just it'll put. Well, it's pictures and videos to the podcast. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it was a lot of fun to make, um, even though right dead in the middle, literally at the halfway point, my old computer went. We had a thermal event. Yes. The uh, the SSD card that was the entire operating system and main drive, C drive, <laughs> just checked out in one pop. And... Uh, So I had to restart from a lot of things, but, you know, it worked well enough. Uh, I still had scratch files, and most importantly is when I do videos, because I am not a video editor, (laughs) Right. I have a spiral-bound notebook that I write frame note by frame note by frame note. And so I was able to recreate it fairly effectively. And then the nice thing was I got me a new laptop that's about, 30 jillion times more powerful (laughs) and what was usually taking me you know four to six hours to render took 15 minutes so that was not too shabby um so what else we got well i I didn't know if you want to take a quick break we can we can tip a tire into the garage and uh you can talk about what you did this morning before i got here okay okay Hello, Jeepers. Don't forget, as always, to check out the uh, On the Trail podcast page, not to mention our YouTube page and our Patreon. If you'd like to become a uh, YouTube sponsor, that'll be great. And as always, check out the 4x4 Radio Network. And again, a big thank you to all of you that uh, reached out and said hi and, and gave us some show feedback. We got a couple cool ideas, so please keep them coming. And with that, we're going to go with Kevin into his domain of happiness, maybe? I don't know. All right, now it's cardboard boxes and you know crates and <laughs> everything else um no what i got to this morning and if you follow us on facebook you'll know i did an update to a prior post about uh, a little over a week ago uh helped uh, our friend bob with the ls powered yj to do some brake work he'd had a brake lock up and i told you all about the brakes lock up and we did the repairs and and one of the things that we realized was hmm he's like but i just did all this you know within the last year and they were the fluid was brown yeah. okay 
And just because you put new fluid and stuff in doesn't mean there wasn't pre-existing rust or grunge, you know, in the system. So it made me think, hmm, need to do that to mine. Because sure enough, I came back and did mine last week. No, week before. And it was more like coffee. Maybe even stout. <laughs> uh, and it's like, yeah, glad I did that. At least it didn't come out like chili. Yeah. So, uh, but I realized that what I'd used was a synthetic DOT3 and a non-synthetic. And yes, officially they're supposed to work well together. But I started looking at the fluid and it's like, mm, that's kind of cloudy. And I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not worth it. Yeah. So I picked up a couple more quarts um, for my pressure bleeder. And this morning, as he said, while I was waiting for Scott to get here, because this was, he'd been driving all the previous day coming down from up in Carolina. So uh, I said, let, let me go ahead and reflush the system. And uh, so the posts out there, you can see it, that even though this fluid was changed just a week ago, it was changed into a system that had been unfortunately i gotta admit neglected for a while yeah and it came out it was nowhere near brown and yeah you could kind of see somewhat through it but it was uh pretty much grade c or d honey color as opposed to yeah. uh, you know grade a clear and so uh, just a thought that if you're doing a full break flush it might be worth doing it twice you know do it the one time drive it for a week or two to kind of stir up and get things to move around and then go ahead and bleed it again. The one trick I'll tell you that's worked both times for me is I use a little hand vacuum pump and the bleed bottle from my uh, power bleeder to vacuum out the uh, uh, master cylinder before I start bleeding. So I'm not having to push all the old garbage fluid through to get it out right uh, saves a lot of fluid but don't start bleeding until you at least top it off then with fresh fluid right. and then put your cap on for pressure so you don't want to get air in the system for me uh, i was surprised at the amount of grunge that came out the second time and even more so the responsiveness of the brakes to the f clean fluid remember brake fluid is hydroscopic and that's a fancy term that says it sucks up water yep and Unfortunately, during hot braking, water turns to steam. Steam is compressible. Brake fluid is not. You end up with squishy brakes or mm -hmm. pulling to one side. Yep. Uh, and which is a problem I had been having. And uh, after this flush, I have virtually no pull anymore. It's back to a normal brake system. So most likely it was either air or some water in one of my front brakes, my left one pr predominantly. But both, uh, all four wheels were bled clean and clear. And, uh, so fortunately, hopefully that'll be a good, safe drive to uh, uh, Deep Beach. Well, one, I want to interject here because you talked about it, and it's something I know from the parts department world is that when we would sell uh, calipers or you know whatever brake system components, we would tell people, you know, do you have brake fluid? Oh, yeah, I got a ball. You know, okay, is it, is it new, unopened? Yeah, yeah, I think, I don't know. Like, look, man, it's cheap. You know, get it here. Because if you, even if you crack that bottle open and you pour an ounce out and you put the lid yeah. back on, set it on the shelf, guess what? It's going to still suck in water. Suck in water. Out of so, the air. Right. So, again, it's best to, you know. You ever wonder why brake master cylinders have such tight fitting caps with gaskets on them? Yeah. <laughs> and that rubber diaphragm that goes up and down under the cap so that it doesn't pull fresh air in on top of the fluid. It just goes on one side of the diaphragm. Mm-hmm is to keep the air away because particularly here in Florida, it's uh, wet air. It's wet air. <laughs> yeah. It's damn near drinkable. Well, it's kind of like, you know, hey, you're going to go outside and have some fun time, have a small slice of Florida air. Yeah. You know, if you're lucky, you won't catch a love bug in your teeth. So, you know, but that's part of the fun of, of living in Florida between the alligators and whatnot. So, Oh, yeah. Well, as we've said before, we, we have all four of the uh, pit vipers in the United States. Uh, in Florida. We're the only state, I think, that has all four of them. Uh, Yay! <laughs> and they like shrubbery and mulch. And <laughs> Gunner got in a tussle with a water moccasin uh, yeah. back in December, and luckily he didn't get bit because it was cool outside, but still, it was enough to make me go, yipe! I said it and then did it in my pants. <laughs> so, again, the point being is, though, is that, you know, I just, I, I nope, I am paying attention when I walk them now. I'll tell yeah. you that right now. Well, that's a good thing, particularly around water, but they don't all hang around water. The the rattlers and pygmy rattlers will like, you know, residential shrubbery and that kind of stuff, and you just learn to 
you know, rattle the bushes, use a, you know, a rake to kind of make sure nothing's there that bothers you. And, um, you know, you just adapt just like the, you know, uh, palmetto bugs and the love bugs that are flying around right now and all the other critters. I mean, if you are traveling to Jeep Beach out of state, oh, they're not going to hear it. They're going to hear you it. Did, if you did, if you did, wash those off. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't just sit there and go, ah, it's fine. You, no. Yeah, that's a fair way to say it. If, if you're leaving Jeep Beach listening to this on the first and you're covered with all that slimy splatter from love bugs, it's very acidic and will eat through your Jeep quicker than the salt from the water, you know, the that ocean. That you parked in. That you parked in. Um, so rinse and wash, repeat, you know, until it's clean. Um, uh, let's see what else going on in the garage. Honestly, I'm packing furiously, yeah. um, chasing this and chasing that, uh, you know, trying this, to remember where I put <laughs> stuff. This might actually be a, 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 a smaller show because we've got so much going on, but I do have to make one thing real quickly. And this is, I do have to talk about the company because we, 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 we preach about calling and reaching out to vendors. Yep. When I called Mastercraft about my seat brackets, you know, I said, hey, you know, looking for my seat brackets and, you know, here's my order number. And they said, okay, well, here's what we got. You know, they're on back order. I'm like, okay, no big deal. And he's like, look, it's just the two of us. So I will call you back and do the best I can. He said, not a problem. So, again, at, you know, they didn't even know. Because when we order parts, when Kevin and I order parts, we don't say, hey, this is, you know, so-and-so from 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 someone where. It's just, you know, anonymously. Like, like my email address I give is my personal email address. Right. Because I don't want them saying, well, what's this? And then, you know, Googling. Because I want to have the same treatment everyone else gets. Mm -hmm. That's and the whole point of the show. That's the whole point of the show. And so we talked for a few minutes. And he, he's like, you know, hey, you got any questions? Just give me a call. And just, you know, there's only two of us here. So we're a little overwhelmed. Hey, not a problem. It's okay. Now, yes. Did I pay good money for these brackets? Absolutely. But at the same time, they're out of stock. I should have bought them earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, so... You know, it's just going to be here when it gets here. You know, again, they'll sit in my storage unit for a year. No, I'm joking. I, mean, I want to get the seats in. Yeah. But take those time. When you do call these vendors or you do call these uh, uh, places, like even when I got my um, my pre-running lights, I ordered them knowing they were going to go on back order. I ordered them December. And I just got them three days. Three day, or by the time this has been recording, I got, them, I got them three days ago. Yeah, was it frustrating because I really wanted them? Yep. But you know what, though? Just be, I was patient. And I did call once on my order and say, hey, what's going on? And they said, hey, this is what we got going on. You should see them in a couple of weeks. And I did. So when you're talking to these vendors and, you know, just be a little more patient, you know, because things are getting better. Mm -hmm. You know, there are more inventory being released. So things are getting better. But just don't forget the human aspect. You know, as a Jeep culture, we're, we're, we're very cool. We're very calming and we're, we're very collective of, of, of I guess, most of us. Are. Most of us, yeah. I lost my train of thought there. So I, I rabbit holed for a minute. I went off the trail. But, yeah, he um, did. <laughs> I'm sitting here going, okay, where are we going with this one? Basically, the whole idea is just be patient with the vendors. Yeah. Th yeah. Although things are better, it's still not 100% yet. Oh, yeah. We, I don't know that it'll be a long time before we're at 100%. Yeah. Um, anywho, uh, again, thanks to uh, all of our patrons that have uh, reached out to us and gave information, and we get all the emails and I didn't know you just I messaged me now. Yeah, I did. It, it said it didn't go through. It was oh. something else we were working on. Oh, okay. But speaking of the wonders of computers, <laughs> yes, great toys having. Sorry, got so, got me excited because when my computer went down, it was between backups, and I'm not going to tell. Oh, I lost stuff. I lost stuff that I'm just absolutely heartbroken over. But I've recovered some things, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, on that note with the Patreon thing, yeah. like when when we come up with these little gifts and stuff like that, Patreons are the reason why we're able to do this stuff. Yep. You know, the, this coming year when we when we were able to donate money for um uh crawling for the, the fallen. fallen. You know, this is the, the more Patreons we get, the more we can come out to events and, you know, the, the, the better we can be out there for the Jeep community with you guys. We do have Don Cox from Tread Lightly. We're going to interview him soon. And some of his uh, supervisors and stuff like mm -hmm. that. We, we're, he, he's been asking us to get the word out, and we want to get it out to you as well. Mm -hmm. And get firsthand, not... not uh, secondhand. Secondhand or thirdhand. Or, well, I heard from my cousin. You know, <laughs> we're we're going to get people directly from Tread Lightly. What's the point of the show? What's the law around everything You know, mm -hmm. with, with what they're doing? And how they're helping to keep the trails open. 
Yeah. And that's critical. And, and sometimes I, I did see on one uh, Facebook group, you know, everyone said, oh, look, it's the safety patrol, the hall monitors of the off road community. Nope. I'll just say this, you know, you want some place to wheel, you know, let's keep these public lands open because, you know, I actually remember recently, you know, someone offered to take me off roading, you know, Hey, you want to get the Jeep drill? Let's go. All right, cool. Where are we going? Well, it's this place I know. Okay. Well, whose land is it? Well, I don't know. It's just, everyone goes there. Uh, no. Yeah. Unfortunately, folks down here in Florida, wheeling spots are very, very few and far between. And there are a lot of people that will push it into lands that are either state-owned lands, federally-owned lands, both of which may or may not allow wheeling, uh, and uh, then private lands. And mm -hmm. Just because you don't see a no trespassing sign doesn't mean someone else tore it down. Right. And, and it's sad that way. It really is. It'd be nice. I understand that there are states, Utah being one of them, where there are huge amounts of public land that uh, is just open and available. Uh, I, I watch the YouTubes on some of those with envy. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and I remember there were other options up in the Northeast states where I could pay a fee and get a sticker and a key, and all of the woodland fire roads were open, you know, to, to my usage as long as, you know, I didn't damage anything. They kept monitors on it. And, you know, if you were the last one using it and somebody dumped trash or did this or cut trees or went off trails, you know, you got in trouble. But there was always, you know, something. But Florida is really, I mean, we're challenged enough as it is down here in the Sunshine State that uh, we don't have much vertical. I mean, the entire state no. goes from sea level to 380 feet above sea level. Yeah. And that's not a place you can wheel. That 380 feet in the middle of the state in a residential community. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Don't mind me, just passing through. Yeah. So uh, I, I'd really like to keep what we have open. There are some very good um, off-road parks. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them get pretty extreme. We've had uh, several friends roll their up, jeeps yeah, yeah, and, and and the uh, and it's not really a fault it's just you know those are extreme parks and they tell you they're extreme parts and if you don't want to take the risk don't go up that trail kind of a thing yeah uh but those that go out into the public lands and we do have open public lands and particularly in the center of the state and but they're very well watched monitored taken care of by like Florida Fish and Wildlife and yeah. people vilify them, but they're not, they are stewards of the land and they are there and you are welcome to drive that land within the rules, which was stay on the trail. Well, they even kept some things like trail 14. There was yeah. a little small play area that was, it was getting washed out, you know, and there was a bypass trail to go through there and they kind of turned a blind eye. Cause you know, they, cause again, a lot of the other places were, were, um, where that were fun were shut down because people just kept going off trail. Well, here's the problem. People kept using these trails on the trail, and that's fine. That's great. But then they started parking their Jeeps off the trail into the tree area and all that. And at that point, they came in with a bulldozer and leveled it flat. Right, because it had people were taking advantage and damaging the ecosystem. One of, one of the things about our Florida ecosystem is it's incredibly fragile. Um you know, the, the little bit of topsoil that settles on the sand after years and years and years can be destroyed by a tire, you know. And the fact that there are parts of Florida that are open to us, you know, and all they ask us to do is, okay, that part's already been chewed up, so stay in that lane. Yeah. You can still see all the wildlife. You can still take the challenges of the sugar sand. You can still do all of that. But, you know, don't go off and tear up more of the uh, the virgin uh, forest yeah. is what little version forest there is in Florida at this point. So, but anyway, we'll get off the soapbox there yeah. uh, and uh, we'll save that for Don. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we'll, we'll let him go for it. But again, uh, this probably, like I said, be a, a abbreviated show because we're both exhausted. We've both been running around under Jeeps and on top of Jeeps, but we do have to talk about one last thing, which is rather funny. So while we were doing Kevin's fuel pump, true wow. to form, we were using magnetic flashlights. Oh, this. <laughs> and I just have to say that because it was the funniest thing ever. So it's a the brand, I guess, or, or the label. It's called Defiant. It, yeah. You bought it at. Uh, I bought it at Home Depot. Home Depot. He yeah. bought me two of these a couple of years ago as a. For Christmas. For yeah. Christmas gift. And I said, oh, that was really nice. Well, uh, hold on. 
What, what, yeah. The reason why I bought them is because Kevin has all the tools and welders and all that. But when it came to flashlights, man. <laughs> I killed them. I'm sorry. I'm brutal. The 80s called. They want their ever ready 2C battery flashlights back, okay? <laughs> and I'm over here with LED headlamps, and, you know, <laughs> stuff that can melt your retina from 100 feet, you know. Because, you know, the, the headlight's so powerful, it's causing a hot spot. Maybe that's my problem on my brain. Be. But the point is, though, is that so I got them some real nice, real bright, you know, defiant lamps. I guess they're. The, the fixtures themselves are about four inch square, slightly clipped corners with a little leg that kicks out in the back that either is a stand or it hooks on things. It's magnetic. Yeah, and it's magnetic, although the magnets are a little weak, I'll be honest with you. I use the hook more often. Uh, good thing I did. <laughs> <laughs> but we were doing all that work, and after we finished, um, I was late to go to the closing on our, our new house we had built. Yeah, on Friday. So I said, thank you very much, guys. I'll see you later. I'll let you know when I test drive the Jeep. It started, which was great. I backed it into its spot and mm -hmm. went in and got a shower and ran off to, to go sign papers for more of my life that I don't have. Uh, <laughs> anyway, Anywho, so. and uh, came back and you know finished cleaning up and went out and test drive the Jeep and all kinds of fun stuff like that. And today we're working. And I'm like, Scott, I got a question for you. He said, what? I said, you, you, because Scott is the habitual tool putter away -er, <laughs> And yes. if you don't keep a good grip, he'll take the one out of your hand and put it away even before you're done loosening the bolt. Mm -hmm. uh, and he goes, no, I, I, I don't know where it is. We, we started looking around the garage and he gets a, he looks at me, he goes, I said, look, if it was under the Jeep, I've driven it. I've driven it quite a bit. We went out that morning. Yeah. We went out that morning and drove it around. Um, Had lunch. Yeah, and uh, we went to the junkyard in it, you know, and bounced uh -huh. around. And we weren't, we weren't, y'all he, okay, need to know that Kevin is not gentle when it comes to his Jeep. Oh, uh, no, no. And there was things going on that were making me use the throttle to test certain uh -huh. components. Yeah. So we were doing several full throttle zero to 60s. Over a, the speed bumps? Oh, yeah. I was doing some airtime. Uh, <laughs> this lightly altered is more than slightly so, in some cases. So anyway, uh, yeah. Scott goes, I got to look just to know. I said, if it was, if it's there, it's splattered down the road somewhere. And he slides under there and starts laughing hysterically. Uh huh. There, sitting on my rear axle. I don't know how it's <laughs> still on the rear axle. I took axle. a picture before we touched it. <laughs> um, wedged between the brake line and the axle housing was the very light mm -hmm. that weak magnet i guess plus the brake line plus the, fortunately i think it was wedged also between the sway bar too yeah it, it, the pounding was pushing it tighter yeah because <laughs> it was a little bit of a tussle to get it back out works fine not crack <laughs> not damage but it went for one heck of a ride yes. <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> well see so so what we're calling it is kevin's rock light installation was a success <laughs> Except I couldn't uh, getting out and turning it on would be a little bit of a pain. Well, you know, never say. Yeah. <laughs> Give me time, I'll Bluetooth it. Yeah, <laughs> like a Bluetooth dry shaft. <laughs> Moving on. No, that's outside of my league. I, I haven't seen the torque values be anything worth worth working on. A couple of SEMO builds when they didn't have time to do the drive shaft, they put the little Bluetooth logo on the uh, end, end caps. of the yokes. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of funny. That was funny, but I've seen plenty of people around here that are more than sh more for show than go mm -hmm. and that's fine if that's what you want to do with your jeep yeah. but you know you look under the front of the jeep and you see the great axle all the lift kits and lights and it's missing something to connect that front axle to a transfer case yep okay yeah hey if it makes you happy go for it mm -hmm. but just remember you got at least have that one yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> But uh, you know, it, it was it was a good it was a good uh, good time today. It's been, it's been a good couple of days. Uh, we've made progress on both Jeeps. I feel mm -hmm. relatively comfortable of driving slightly altered two and a half hours across the state to Daytona. Um, wow, you got full on twang right there. Yeah, I can do that if I want to. Daytona. You got to remember, I was born in North Carolina, raised in Albany, Georgia. Mm. Okay, that other that other way I talk was just because I went to college up in Pennsylvania, and they would have shot me if I'd talked like that at home. Oh, I have to edit that now, probably. No, not really. No, I am a remember, folks. Just so you understand, I am a born Southerner. <laughs> Didn't come out with a Southern accent. He showed me a picture when he was younger today. <laughs> Um, I am quarter blood Cherokee registered with the Cherokee nation. You know, I am a he mutt. Lo he looked like a dollar general Duke boy. It was so cute. 
<laughs> Just remember that dollar boy, Duke boy, can put a bullet through your head at 50 paces if you're not very polite. Gee, easy. <laughs> wow. I don't know if we can, we can like release this one now. Down, I'm man. sure you can bleep out the appropriate words. Nah. You heard me worse out there in the shop when things. <laughs> Dude, homie was throwing wrenches and just. You no, well, the, that was last Friday. Homie punched himself in the face with a, and I'm not exaggerating, a 16 inch crescent wrench. <laughs> We were taking the gas tank out. Hey, all of a sudden, it's a bang. I'm like, you okay? I just punched myself. I'm like, and I, the, I instantly want to do the, quit hitting yourself, quit hitting yourself. But then he I get deadly accurate as he throws a wrench at me. You know, here, put this away. Clang. You know? so I have about an inch and a half long red, you know, uh, whatever you want to call the mark on your cheek. mark on my cheek where my knuckle came back, powered by that wrench that came off. Bob walks up and goes, why is Scott unconscious? <laughs> no, I didn't touch him. Yeah. <laughs> he loves those buttons. I do uh, love those buttons. But uh, hey, speaking of buttons, I do you think it's time we lock some button hubs and get out of here? Or do you got something else you want to cover? No, I, I don't got no button hubs. I got the tourney can because because I'm kind of tired and uh, we need we got a lot of stuff to do the next couple of days so we can make it yes. to G Beach. Yeah, <laughs> so, I got so, to pack my banana hammock. So. <sighs> And you're worried about what I say, nah. <laughs> <laughs> folks. Don't uh, Google that, kid. <laughs> Uh, hey, my humor's implied. How? No, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> I'm not going there, Come folks. On, do it, 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 do it. <laughs> walk, 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 walk. What's wrong, Colonel Sanders? Chicken? I am going to get hit so hard when this gets... I know, now we can't shut it off because now I'm being protected from you punching me. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. And all fun and games, we actually... Yeah, we we get along fine. Yeah. Um, no, we're 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 perfectly fine. Um, <laughs> and I am proud of who I came where I, where I came from and who I am. Yeah. So uh, you know, I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like that kind of stuff, but hey, uh, that's uh, that's who I is. I, hey, I have I'm a just feeling. a redneck engineer who went to college and became to speak an engineer. And became an engineer. Yeah, it was the old joke. You know, first you couldn't spell engineer, now you are one. That's right. I still can't speak English clearly most of the time. I get my words mixed. Yes, my favorite is when I type in engineer on the computer, I got to go engine near. <laughs> so sometimes it comes out a little too long and funny with the wrong letters. But hey, it's okay, though. It's implied there. It is. It is. But uh, anywho, as Scott said, I do believe it's time for us to lock hubs. Those of us that have hubs that lock, put the Jeep in four low, preferably, because mm -hmm. it's just fun. Yeah. And, and uh, go hit some trails. Absolutely. Remember, as always, when you hit those trails, make sure to take nothing but pictures, memories, and your trash when you leave the trail. Sorry, I had a minimal burp hiccup kind of thing. It's like a burp up. And as we say, wheel legal, tread lightly, take next thing, as he said, pictures, yes. memories, and of course your trash. We want to keep those trails open, particularly down here in the Sunshine State, because there's not very many left. Yeah. And, uh, you know, otherwise I might have to sell my brand new house and move somewhere where I can take the Jeep off-road. We got to get to Wind Rock. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We do. We will. Well, there's also, don't forget this fall, is Jasper. Jasper, better known as, correctly known as Pickens County's Sheriff Jeep Fest. Mm -hmm. um, what is it? Crawl for the Kids is what they call it. And it is an outstanding event. Uh, one of my favorite in the Southeast. Uh, I know its popularity continues to grow and grow and grow and grow. And we'll bring you more information on that as it comes along. They just put the dates out for it. Yep. So uh, it's... Uh, Oh, well, I'll bring it to you next time. It's usually I'm on um, Labor Day weekend. Labor Day, that's it. Yeah, Labor Day weekend it is. It starts on that weekend. So It's always my birthday weekend. Yeah. Woohoo! So I uh, think we're going to go up there and rent ourselves a house, if that works yep. out with you, and and uh, go up there and kind of hang up the microphone for the for the week. And grab the steering wheel. Grab the steering wheel and, and go make the, the um, Georgia red clay fly. There you go. So, All right, folks. Take care. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Proceeding has been provided for entertainment only. Proper service and repair procedures are vital to the safe, reliable operation of all motor vehicles, as well as personal safety of those performing those repairs. Standard safety procedures and precaution, including the use of safety goggles and proper tools and equipment, should be followed at all times to eliminate the possibility of personal injury or improper service which could damage the vehicle or compromise its safety. What he said... <laughs> Thanks a lot for listening, guys. You guys have a great day. Bye. <laughs>
This has been a Bendaxel Media Production.